This is going to be Bible Institute lesson number five. Continuing the lessons about the spirit world and possibly the last one for the spirit world, then we'll move on to something else. But this one is going to be about devils, evil spirits, unclean spirits, fallen angels. And why is this study so important? Because we need to know the enemy. We need to know his tactics, his techniques, his character. And you just think that your biggest adversary is your boss, your in-laws, or even your wife. But the Bible says otherwise. Most likely there is an unseen force behind all the resistance that you get from people in your life. And you need to realize that, that it's more than just people that you're facing every day. And this could make you more patient with people too if you realize that uh, this isn't just that person, it's uh, the spirits behind them that's causing me so much trouble. It can make you more patient with people, more lenient with people. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So right there I told you, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It may feel like it, but really it's the spirits behind these people that's giving you the most trouble. And Paul was very aware of the spirit world and warned us about it. And the Bible talks a lot about it. You would be surprised if you really just sat and wrote down. You read, read through the Bible and you sat and wrote down every time it talks about some type of evil dealing with a spirit. The Bible talks about familiar spirits back in the Old Testament. You know, it's in the Old Testament too. The, the advice it gives you is to stay away from people that have familiar spirits. In Leviticus 19.31, it says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. It says in Leviticus 20, in verse 6, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits... And after wizards to go on whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Spirits can compare to flies. They'll jump off somebody and then land on you. So the best advice for this topic is to stay away from anyone who is involved in these forbidden practices the Bible talks about, the wizardry the people dealing with spirits. In Deuteronomy 18, 10, and 11, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. So if you're a child of God, then you really need to be aware that you should stay away from psychics, witchcraft, wizards, or anyone who claims to talk to the dead, use spells, or any type of magic. All that stuff can get you hooked up with unclean spirits. And they're a very real thing that can really mess your life up. Things like Ouija boards, you need to stay away from that. There's all kinds of testimonies of people who started using Ouija boards, their life got messed up really bad just from using those Ouija boards and getting hooked up with some type of spirit. It's possible for a born-again believer even to get led away into witchcraft. Maybe not even realizing it, maybe on purpose, maybe they did it as a lost person and they got away from the Lord again and they got right back into what they were doing before they were saved. And you still have sinful flesh that is capable of doing the worst sins. Galatians 5, 19 through 20 says, Now the works of the flesh. Now these are works that you can still commit because you still got flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. And it goes on. You see, a Christian since he still has flesh, can still get mixed up in these things of the flesh. This witchcraft stuff, it's something that you can do in the flesh, 
but it's also connects you with the evil spirit world. And in this world, it isn't just the poorest of the poor that can be influenced by devils. It can be the richest of the rich, the upper class, the high class, high position people, the people in authority. You'll notice the kings of the Old Testament even dealt with familiar spirits. In 2 Kings 21, 6, and he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. That was King Manasseh. And many of the uh, rulers, kings, pharaohs in the Old Testament got hooked up with these people that do these occult practices. Pharaoh had magicians. Nebuchadnezzar had magicians. Saul dealt with a witch. And it's no different today. You hear about rulers today who consult with the so-called dead when they want to make a decision. 2 Kings 23, 24 talks about workers with familiar spirits and the rulers of the darkness of this world, the unclean spirits, work with the flesh and blood rulers of this world and make a conspiracy against Jesus Christ. And that's why Psalm 2, 2 says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's the conspiracy that we know for sure is true. That this world is against the Lord and against his anointed. And that it goes beyond flesh. It's so bad that it goes beyond flesh. It can't be just regular man. There has to be spirits behind it. Isaiah 8 19 says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead. you notice a common theme through the Bible that the big shots of this world seek the dead above the living. Why would you seek the dead above the living? You have a Bible. You have the Holy Spirit who can guide you into all truth. You don't need help from those who seek after spirits. You don't need someone to contact the dead and give you information. You got all the information that you need in the Bible. It's a more sure word of prophecy. So if you don't learn anything else from this lesson, learn that you have a Bible and that's all you need. You don't necessarily have to learn what all this other stuff is. You don't have to learn uh, about a witch and a wizard and a psychic, all that occult stuff. You just know you got a Bible and you don't need all that stuff. You have a more sure word of prophecy. You don't need to go seek the information from dead people or from ghosts or from a, a spirit. You've got the Holy Spirit in you and you've got the Bible. So never go to seek after psychics, palm readers, fortune tellers, or don't use astrology. Don't try to look at the stars to get an answer, all that stuff. You've got a more sure word of prophecy in the Bible. You see, King Saul couldn't get a hold of God through a prophet. He couldn't get a hold of God through the Urim and the Thummim, what they used back then to get an answer. And God quit dealing with Saul, so he wasn't uh, speaking with Saul. So what did Saul do? He sought the witch at Endor and her familiar spirits. He did the wrong thing. And as believers, we need to steer clear of all that stuff. Now, how can you drive out these unclean spirits in your life? Well, in 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 15, 1 Samuel 16, 14 through 15, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. So the unclean spirits, they're, they're under the command of God still. And he will use them at times as a judgment on people, just like he did with Saul. So Saul had an unclean spirit. He had an evil spirit. And look what drove it away. In 1 Samuel 16, 23, 
It says, And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. If you look, or if, if you feel like you're being tempted by sp spirits, unclean spirits, devils, then put psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs in your house, on your phone, wherever else, and maybe it'll drive them away. In 1 Samuel 18, 10 through 11, it says, And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand, as at other times, and there was a javelin in, him, in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So Saul, he was full of the devil, full of these unclean spirits, wanted to kill David. David was just playing on the harp, trying to get rid of those evil spirits. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work every time. It didn't work here. The, the uh, clean music, the psalms, hymns, spiritual songs did not work in this instance. So maybe there's some unclean spirits stronger than others, more stubborn than others, but you got to try what you can. Notice that Saul was so full of evil spirits that he prophesied. So just because someone is preaching doesn't mean that they are godly. It doesn't mean that they aren't devil-possessed. And um, Saul was so full of them, he would do crazy stuff. He would try to kill David. He would prophesy. And the Bible speaks of doctrines of devils. There's all kinds of people that are claimed to be preachers but they're full of devils. They have doctrines of devils. This is another reason why this is important to study is because you know that people teaching this major false doctrine are obviously full of the devil. They have doctrines of devils. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils so it's still a real thing going on right now today speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron you see people doing stuff and you're like how could they do that I, it, it just doesn't seem human to me how they could do it you don't understand it well they've got their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry this is some of the doctrines they teach. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So some teachings that are doctrines of devil are given as examples here and commanding people to abstain from meats, commanding people to stay unmarried. Those are doctrines of devils. The Catholic Church does that. The priests aren't allowed to get married. The nuns aren't allowed to get married. And what happens? They end up in sex perversion. What do you hear about over and over again? What are they known for? Being pedophiles. Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. That means burning your lust. It's better to marry than to burn in your lust all the time. You know, if a man desires a woman, he needs to get married. Not take this vow that they take and stay unmarried. And it's a doctrine of a devil to tell somebody to not get married. The devils are interested in, in corrupting your doctrine. Just from that verse, we know that they're interested in doctrine, and your doctrine affects your behavior. Bad doctrine affects more than just the person teaching it. For example, in 1 Timothy 1, 19 through 20 it says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. See, they make shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Now, these guys were turned over to Satan for simply teaching a bad doctrine, a false doctrine. They were turned over to Satan for teaching that the resurrection had passed already. So Paul sees it as a serious thing that you got your doctrine right, because you don't just uh, hurt yourself. It says in 2 Timothy 2.17, talking about these same dudes, and their word will eat as doth a canker. 
like Cancer, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So they aren't just hurting their self, they're on overthrowing the faith of other people. When you teach bad doctrine, you can overthrow the faith of people around you. You can lead people to hell. In Matthew 23, 14, Jesus Christ talks about how religious hypocrites will receive the greater damnation because they're leading people to hell. They're using the name of Jesus to make money or do whatever else. And devils can be behind bad doctrine. They can be behind books, movie scripts, even a Facebook post. Notice how they led people to write false doctrine and pretend to be Paul. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Notice that. Be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed instead of perdition. So someone led by a spirit, was writing letters with bad doctrine, and it was giving the Thessalonians a spirit of fear. When you got a spirit of fear going on, something giving you a spirit of fear, that's not from God. That's uh, from unclean spirits because the Lord doesn't give you the spirit of fear. And uh, devils are interested in religion and churches and preaching and your doctrine. So they'll lead people to write bad doctrine. Like they led this person to write this letter with Paul's name on it. They lead people to write movie scripts that are wicked. Songs that are wicked. Go back to Genesis 3 and see how the chief devil casts doubt on the words of God and cha changes the words of God. <coughs> and this is why it's so important to teach people about the Bible issue and to give them good doctrine. <laughs> Today, nobody is focusing on doctrine. That's been put on the shelf. And this makes everyone much more vulnerable to unclean spirits who know the right doctrine and know how to lead others in the opposite direction. And uh, in James 2.19, it says, Thou believest that there is one God... Thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. They know the right doctrine, and they can twist it and teach you something else. Those devils that possessed the maniac of Gadara knew that Jesus Christ was Son of God Most High. They knew it. They went, ran, and worshipped him. So, what have they led billions to believe? That he isn't the Son of God Most High, and that he isn't God manifested in the flesh. But the scriptures are clear that Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. And the only cure for evil spirits is the Lord Jesus Christ and his power. Notice how Jesus Christ cures, cures men with evil spirits. In Luke 7, 21, it says, In that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were bind he gave sight. Luke 8, 2, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. So Jesus cast seven devils out of her. And this shows that a person can be infested with more than one devil. That could explain for the different levels of wickedness you see in people. And this also shows that there is one devil, but many devils, and it calls them devils. It doesn't call, it doesn't actually call them demons in the Bible. It calls them devils. There's one devil, many devils. There's one chief, and there's a whole bunch of little ones. 
The Lord gave power to his disciples and the apostle Paul to cure people of evil spirits. In Acts 19, 11 through 15, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews exor exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? So, you see that? Paul had uh, the power from the Lord to get rid of evil spirits from somebody. You know, he had the sign gifts of an apostle. And, you know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians one twenty two that the Jews require a sign. And since God's not dealing with the Jews today, the sign gifts are done away for a while. And casting out devils is one of those. So most likely, the people going around that you see casting out devils, most likely they're not really casting out devils. But these, another thing we see is that these evil, evil spirits, these unclean spirits, they know Christians by name. He said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? They are aware of the power of Christ that's in you, and you don't know the unclean spirit or even know it's there, but it sees what you're doing and watches you and which is what you do for the Lord, and he hates it. So Jesus Christ has complete authority over the devil and unclean spirits. There's no contest. All the power they have is simply allowed to be there by the Lord himself. And if the Lord didn't allow it, then they wouldn't have any power. In, in Mark one twenty-seven, it says, And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. In Mark 1, 32, And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. The devils know about the Lord Jesus. They know the truth of the Bible. They know more than any Bible teacher you've met. And <clears throat> when they would see Jesus, they would run and worship him. And they were bringing these people to Jesus that had these unclean spirits, these devils. And in Mark 1, 34, it says, And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. In Luke 4, 41, And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. So, now let's look at Mark chapter 5, one of the greatest parts of the Bible on this particular subject about unclean spirits. It says in Mark 5, 1 and 2, But they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So, the, un the man with unclean spirit comes to meet Jesus, and they're obsessed with Jesus Christ in a bad way just like Bill Maher, just like Kanye West, just like Marilyn Manson, somebody like that who can't keep Jesus out of their mouth, yet they hate Jesus. And notice also they hang around the tombs. He was coming out of the tombs. So they like dead things, death metal, things like that, things that have to do with death. In Mark 5, 3, it says, Who had his dwelling among the tombs? And no man could bind him. No, not with chains. So supernatural strength. In Mark 5, 4, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So he's under, he's, he's uncontrollable. You can't tame him. There's nothing you can say to him. You can't reason with him. He's, He's just going to do whatever he wants to. He's going to break stuff. In Mark 5, 5, it says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. So very emotional. 
self-mutilation. Doing some self-mutilation stuff. He doesn't have a job. He's in the tombs night and day, always. Night and day. He loves the high places. He's in the mountains, so he loves the high places. And you know about the high places in the Bible. they uh, That's where they would go worship their false gods. And uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mark 5, 6, and 7. Well, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So they know the prophecies in the scriptures of their coming destruction. They don't want to be tormented before the time, as they say in another place. They call Jesus the Son of God Most High, the Son of the Most High God. They know the right doctrine. In Mark 5, 8, it says, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thy unclean spirit. So they're under control of the Lord. In Mark 5, 9, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. <clears throat> so they have names, just like angels have names. And this also shows you many devils can enter a person at once. There was many in this guy. In Mark 5, 10 through 12, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So you see, the devils seem to want in a body. We see they can get in animals possibly even machines. Remember, the spirit of the cherubs went into those wheels, and that machine in Ezekiel was powered by the spirit of the cherub. For this reason, the AI stuff is very creepy, if they can get into machines. In Mark 5, 13, it says, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So the legion is about 2,000. So about 2,000 devils. And in Mark 5, 14 and 15, And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to see Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. So they see this guy sitting before he was bouncing off the walls. He's clothed before he was naked, and he's in his right mind before he wasn't in his right mind. He was out of his mind. So this shows you the devils lead a man to just run wild, can't be tamed, never sitting down, just always antsy. They lead them to be unclothed, naked. They lead them to be out of their mind because this guy wasn't in his right mind before. And Mark five sixteen through 18, And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Notice the man is still attracted to the Lord Jesus Christ, but in a much different way than he was when he had the legion. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and, had, and hath had compassion on thee. Now here is another case of devil possession in Mark 9.20. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. Now notice, children are not exempt from being attacked by unclean spirits. You see this today in the Sodomites, in the trannies, and even straight men who are filthy liberals with no morals or conscience, going after their, the children, going after your children, maybe. Any man who thinks it is okay for a child to be able to change his gender is a sick, sick pervert. He's a sick pervert himself, even if he is straight. Even if he is not a sodomite or a tranny, 
If he thinks it's okay for a little boy to change his gender, he's a sick freak. These people are completely devil-possessed. They're filthy. And the only thing that's going to help them is the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, the blood of Jesus can reach anybody. But these people, as long as they're staying the way that they are, are filthy, filthy people that you need to stay away from. Completely reeking with devils. Anybody who is uh, trying to lead you to believe that being a sodomite is okay, to be a tranny is okay, or making you think it's okay to take your child to, to, to let a sodomite drag queen uh, read to them at a library is one sick puppy. These are sick freaks you need to stay away from. And in Mark 9, 22, it says, And oft times it hath cast him into the fire, and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So they seek to destroy. It was casting him into the fire, into the waters to destroy him. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. So the Lord has so much power over unclean spirits, he can get the devils out of you and make it where they can't enter you anymore. And that's why a Christian can't be possessed in the sense that an unclean spirit gets his soul. However, he can be possessed in that it gets his flesh. Your flesh isn't born again. And you can yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. And in 1 Corinthians 5, a saved man was turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So a Christian's flesh can be possessed, but the devil can't get his soul. The soul has been cut loose from the flesh. Now, notice what Jesus uses to cast out the spirits. In Matthew 8, 16, it says, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. So the power is in the words. The words of God help drive unclean spirits away, and putting the word in will flush out the bad things. And in Matthew 12, 24, it says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So obviously, Beelzebub is the devil, and that name means Lord of the Flies. So devils are likened to flies and birds, and there is Bible proof that some devils are more wicked than other devils, because in Matthew twelve forty three through 45, it says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so it shall it be also unto the, this wicked generation. Things we learn from these verses is that devils find rest in the housing of a lost man's body. While the Holy Spirit lives in the temple of a saved man's body. The unclean spirit can find a lost man and inhabit him. Maybe the lost man somehow gets rid of the devil through a false religion that will use the word of God at times. So the devil leaves for a while. But then comes back to the body and finds it empty, swept, and garnished. It's cleaned up through the turning over of a new leaf through this religion that maybe caused him to clean up his life. But it's still empty. There's no Holy Spirit inside. So he takes seven more spirits, more wicked than himself. And the man was even worse than he was before. And this creates a self-righteous, religious, devil-possessed person. Some of the most wicked people of all time are self-righteous, religious, devil-possessed people who will receive the greater damnation, as Jesus talks about in Matthew 23. And in Mark 16, 9, it says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast out seven devils. Once again, you see, more than one devil can inhabit a single person. Now notice something else in the same chapter. 
and Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So you see casting out devils in that list. It's associated with all the other sign gifts that the apostles had. And if you've listened to other studies I've done about the sign gifts, you know that I teach the sign gifts temporarily have ceased when the Lord stopped dealing with the Jews, but they'll start up again when he begins to deal with the Jews again in the tribulation. But the power to cast out devils was another sign to unbelieving Jews. And it doesn't seem like we have that same ability to cast out devils in the way the apostles had it. But we still have power because <clears throat> we got the Bible, we got the Word of God, we got the blood of the Lord Jesus. So we can still face them every day. We're not powerless against them. But you are not going to start, you know, a big unclean spirit healing line where we're going to have everybody that's possessed come up on stage and start quoting Bible verses and see the unclean spirits come out of them. That, you see a lot of that. That's another reason why this teaching is so important. You're seeing these people with these ministries of just, they're claiming to be casting out these devils, and a lot of this stuff is fake and trying to get people's money. But another thing, uh, devils not only inhabit bodies, they inhabit places. In Revelation 18, 2, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. So there are places that when you go there, you can almost feel the evil in the darkness, whether it be a house or in a mall, in a big city or on a street or in a church or in an entire state or even a country. They can inhabit places. Not just people, but places. That's why you get a weird, icky feeling when you go to some places. Look at Isaiah 34, 9 through 11. It says, And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch, and it shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever, but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch up stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So you see that? That they can inhabit a place, not just a body. Verse 12 says, They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing, and thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortress thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons." and a court for owls. You see how these winged creatures picture devils. Owls, braven, these unclean birds. So just like unclean spirits likes dead things, so do unclean birds like dead things. You see them circling around dead things. And after the Lord defeats all of his foes at the second coming, what do the fowls do? They come down to feast on their flesh. So when you see a vulture, a raven, or an owl, or some type of unclean bird, remember they picture unclean spirits. The things you can't see are represented by stuff that you can see. You know, Romans 1.20 talks about this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. The things you can't see... The spirit world are seen in something you can see. Another thing, devils like worship, just like the chief of devils likes worship. What were they doing in the Old Testament? In Leviticus 17, 7, And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they go a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. So why do you think the devils inhabit celebrities today? Because that's who gets worshipped. And then, in turn, that means you're going to have devil-possessed entertainment. 
That's who gets worship is the celebrities. So if the celebrities are possessed by the devil, what do you think you're getting entertained by? You're getting entertained by devils. In Deuteronomy 32, 17, it says, They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to gods that come newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see, those false gods in the Old Testament, they represent devils. Like Moloch and th those guys like that, that could have been at one time a fallen angel that actually was on the earth and then they reared up a statue for him to worship him. And Revelation 9, 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Look at this one. In Second Chronicles eleven fifteen, And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils, and for the calves which he had made. Devils like false religion. They like to have priests in their religion. They like to have high places, a place to do their false religion. And an image, a golden calf or something. And a lot of these entertainers you see are nothing more than priests for the devils. Jay-Z, nothing but a priest for the devil. People like that. And Psalm 106, 37, Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. The devils like a sacrifice. The devils are after the children, just as that unclean spirit came to that boy when he was of a child. So where do unclean spirits come from? That's the big question. You know, we know that they are pictured by unclean birds or pictured by flies. They... A bunch of them can inhabit somebody at one time, so either they're really little or since they're a spirit, they can just, you know, go through each other and many of them inhabit a place at once. So, uh, we don't ha know too much about exactly how they look. We don't know exactly where they came from. Some people say that they're the fallen angels. I really wouldn't argue with that. Some men say they are the disembodied spirits of the giants. Some say they are spirits that inhabited the earth during the gap. And my honest answer is I don't really know where they came from. And there's uh, another theory that they could just be uh, some type of counterfeit life. For example, in Revelation 16, 13 through 14, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So it says these unclean spirits came out of the mouth of the dragon like frogs. I think that's significant because remember the battle between the magicians and Aaron. Uh, God used Moses and Aaron to bring forth live frogs, right? The magicians, through the power of the devil, they also brought forth live frogs. Exodus 8, 7, And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. And those unclean spirits came out of the mouth of the dragon, the devil. They came out like frogs. So the devil can't make something from dust and copy the creation of Genesis, just like the magicians couldn't bring forth lice from the dust back in Exodus. But the Lord does allow the devil to give life, just like the image of the beast will have life brought to it in the tribulation. So... I don't teach this as absolute truth, but the unclean spirits could just be a res, a, some type of counterfeit life made by the devil himself that comes out of his mouth there in Revelation 16. These unclean spirits, like frogs, came out of the mouth. The most popular belief is that they're fallen angels, and I don't write off that conclusion. If they are fallen angels, then they would have had to change the way that they look and, and, uh, and things like that. 
which is possible because Lucifer did. At one time he was perfect in beauty. Now he's the serpent and Leviathan. He went from being the anointed cherub to being a great red dragon. But one reason I believe they're not fallen angels is because angels don't have to inhabit a body. When you see them show up, they're just, they got their own spiritual body. When they come down, they already have one. The devils are, don't seem to have a body. They're looking for a body to inhabit. And in Zechariah chapter 5, you have female unclean spirits with wings. And that, that's different than the angels in the Bible because when the angels show up, they're male without wings. And in Zechariah 5, these uh, spirits here are said to be wicked. In Zechariah 5, 5 through 10, it says, Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talon of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then I said to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? So you got two female spirits here that are said to be wicked, and they got the wings of a stork. So that could give you an idea of what they might possibly look like, unless this is just some other different spirit being entirely. So female spirits with wings. And we know it's unclean spirits because in verse 8, the angel said, this is wickedness. But there you have it. What, where did they come from? We don't exactly know. Seems like they come from the devil, Revelation 16, to come out of the mouth of the dragon. You know, words out of his mouth, words are like spirits anyway. So there's something to that, I think. I don't, we don't really know. But one thing we do know, when the king of both kingdoms shows up, he'll make the unclean spirit pass out of the land. Zechariah 13, 2 says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered, and also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So there is going to be no more unclean spirit that you have to worry about when we get to the millennium.